Yeah, no CO2 in this one, but super easy growing plant is Timmy. Timmy! There's nothing in there that can take it from him, but it's just what he likes to do, bless him. And there we go, look, back to looking immense. At some point, I want to actually completely change this. I've got a big chunk of algae. I left it there. Why not? That's growing really, really nice. Oh, it's actually purling since I just did a water change. But doesn't it look clean? It's a, it's a nice look, isn't it? I've now the lighting. And what is the lighting? It's a little desk lamp. Look at the cherries. They are gone nuts. Better sorority tanks. So these are all female better fish. <laughs> Well, welcome back to the vlog, guys. Now, for ages, you guys have been saying to me, you need to do a full tour of both the studios, all the tanks, and I keep thinking, yeah, I really do need to do that, and then I never actually do it. So, this video, we're gonna look at everything. It's gonna be a long one, so get a drink or something and sit back and relax. We've got a lot to get through. Probably best just to jump straight in. Let's go. So straight in at number one, guys, we are looking at the Asian Fish Aquarium that I set up three months ago. It's gone from strength to strength. This features quite a lot because the amount of times I come back to the tank and just point out all of the <laughs> pearl weed, which grows absolutely fantastic, probably due for a trim again soon. This is how I like it. This is the best it looks. And then more than this is too much. Less than this, I think it looks a bit barren. Look at that garami there. Powder blue garami. He's looking great. I kind of need to top the water up, but it's okay. At least there's like no danger of any fish jumping out. He is fantastic. Boss of the tank everywhere, but no bullying, no aggression at all. Everyone said there might be some issues with some aggression because I've got three females in here. I've got the one male, but I've, I've not seen any aggression. Everyone seems to get along well. And I think that's probably due to the fact that there's so many places to hide. Let me take you around the tank. So this here now is actually my favorite view of the tank. I think that looks great, don't you? Like, you can't tell any depth, but it just looks like, look, if I come closer, I get all the glass out of the shot. Sorry about all the lights, but I can't go around turning off all the lights because we would be here forever. Well, I would be forever making this. I haven't got forever because you guys know I need to pump out more videos because I love making videos. Build videos, there's lots more build videos coming. Anyway, look at those. So we've got three uh, Siamese algae eaters in the, well, there's only two there, but there are three in total. Oh, there's four now, reflections. Sorry, <laughs> that's not funny. Um, yeah, and they do a massively good job of keeping this algae free because this is my desk. This is my desk area here where I do lots of editing and everything like that. And when you just sat down like this, it's just perfect. You can just see around it. I can see Timmy's tank in the background. Obviously, we're going to get to that in a bit. But yeah, it just, it's just so distracting, but also so good. Something about being in the environment when you're working that makes you sort of work even harder. I can't really explain it. But this side is an absolute mass. <laughs> that needs trimming. Probably because I don't see it that often because the, uh, the, the, the laptops are always flicked up. But super, super healthy. And yeah, really good. So there are some coolie loaches in here but it's now seven o'clock in the morning, so we might not see them. Normally they're hanging around in the grass, or sorry, pearl weed, I call it grass sometimes at this point, but where are they? No, they're all hiding at the moment. I'll try and get some B-roll footage of them for you. And many people always ask me as well, do you see a two in this tank? No, I don't. I started off with like <laughs> one bubble every three seconds or something from this tiny little regulator thing here. Uh, as soon as that ran out, I just didn't bother replacing it because it's grown so well and apparently the amount I was using doesn't make any difference to be honest anyway. So yeah, no CO2 in this one, but super easy growing plants and stems that mean, in my view, you don't really need it. Depending on your water, of course, I've got soft water, therefore it holds sort of decent background levels of CO2 anyway. So not, not the same as injected CO2, nothing like it, but it still gives me a good base to work from really. And up next, we've got my little mini pond. Now this was also set up about three months ago. It's filled right out. These are bits of, of moss down here. This is just regular Java moss, to be honest. It just grows nice and compact because I, I put them in on stones. Uh, wrapped, I wrapped the moss on stones. Tiny little pebbles they were actually. There's only a few of them dotted about. And they, oh, let me turn that light off because there's so much reflections. Um, yeah, it's better. 
So there was there was just a few pebbles with a ton of moss on and it's just covered the whole bottom. Typical me, in my fashion, I haven't trimmed it back. I think it looks really natural and, and I really like it. So that's why I haven't done that. It was actually a lot worse than this just a minute ago, but I just took the scissors to it and hacked all the section out. But the guppies are breeding well. There's lots of babies. There's peppercories in there as well. There's a mano shrimp. Um, there's a few Otto Sinkless catfish as well. So yeah, the algae is completely kept at bay and the, there's, the, there's a load of babies in the middle from the last sort of batch, if you like, that are growing up now. Oh, no, 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 we've had a new batch. There's one. Yay, more coming. So I'm gonna be changing this soon though because the immersed plants, the plants that are growing out of the water, are dying off. And the reason for that is because there's these awful little green flies on them that they kill plants. Apparently they inject into the stem cells or the cells in the stems and it just kills them off there was some amazing lush growth here with immersed limnophila and it's all died right back this whole thing was a bush but there's not, nothing really i can do about it apparently you can sp spray sort of like uh, soapy water on which kills them but obviously i can't be doing that because it'll be a foam bath in no time in here so yeah it's time for a change anyway um i've, I've had enough really of this tank i want to do something really cool with some black lava rock next just do like a sort of like i don't know mountainy thingy i don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll see i've got good plans for it though okay and then next to the tank right here is timmy timmy <laughs> hello timmy so this is his turtle tank uh, the heat lamp's off at the moment it will come on shortly um but that's his little basking area on top of there it's all the right temperature set up for him we've got a few plants in the back oh i always forget to say he's a musk turtle so he stays really small and he might even be fully grown to be fair males uh, tend to be smaller than females he's definitely a male in my opinion his tail looks just like the male of uh, a previous turtle i've had which is more sort of pointed and longer uh, the females have a, a much shorter sort of stumpier tail yeah simple setup just a 60 centimeter tank so a two foot tank i think it's about 90 liters but yeah this is his home maybe we should feed him hang on okay little buddy here it is here's your food come and get it can you see it there go on then ready ready oh, got it <laughs> as always he runs off with it to hide I, I don't know why he does that. There's nothing in there that can take it from him, but it's just what he likes to do, bless him. Yeah, nice simple setup, and that was deliberate with this. With this, what I wanted to do was just keep it nice and simple for him so that it's easy to maintain, easy to find him, because in his previous setup, I lost him and I panicked. <laughs> but in this one, it's all good. So next to Timmy, I've got this bowl aquarium. Now, many of you keep asking in all the vlogs, what is going on with that tank? Why is there so much algae? So this is a no filter setup. And I left it because there's so many water fleas on there. Um, it's really hard to pick them up, but maybe I'll try. Maybe that's picking them up. Yeah, there we go. Loads of them. Absolutely tons of them everywhere. So I was just really interested in, in seeing why or what happened and what would happen with the water fleas if they'd keep getting more and more. They seem to have got to a level now where they're staying at that amount. So let me show you now. I'll drain the water, fill it up, and it'll be absolutely perfect straight away. And there we go, look, back to looking immense. Now, you know, there are a couple of Amano shrimp in there and so many times I've done that 100%, well, almost 100% water change and they've been absolutely fine. Doesn't bother them at all. So I guess my water's pretty good straight out of the tap. I know down here in the southwest of England, we don't have a lot of chlorine in our water because it's all pretty clean. Um, but yeah, look at that. It's looking good, isn't it? It's quite a nice little setup. Just a little fun one that I did and um, yeah, just keep it there as more of a sort of display than rather than an actual aquarium, if you like. But the dwarf hair grass is growing absolutely fantastic. It's almost carpeted the whole area. The um, Monte Carlo in the foreground doing the same and then it's Monte Carlo also in the tree <laughs> and that's doing great. It's got little roots growing all the way out the bottom of it, spreading, doing fantastically well. Nice little aquarium that. And then next to that one, we've just got a couple of little ones that I've just keeping some plants in at the moment. At some point, I'm going to be set up, setting up a whole new racking system for nanos. So that's coming shortly as well. That's to look forward to. And then there's another bowl down there. And then there's an empty nano, an empty nano, which is the same as that one. And then below those, we've got one, two, 60 piece, 60 centimeter or two foot aquariums. Again, another separate racking system I want to do for all of those. So I've got all sorts of equipment and everything down here at the moment. It's all going in new setups coming soon, but not at the moment. Moving on to the pieces of resistance <laughs> or however that french saying is um, this is the discus aquarium it's currently 
undergoing some treatment for some cyanobacteria that has perked its head again. I got rid of it for a while, it's come back. It's always the way, apparently. But that's cool. Um, the fish are doing absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. As many of you know, they were spawning. Um, not, not at the moment they're not, but look, they're getting ready to be fed, actually. But they're looking really, really nice. The whole tank's actually is perfect, apart from that cyanobacteria. It's an annoying little thing. I'm trying to come up with solutions to get rid of it permanently. Maybe you can't. Maybe it's something I just have to deal with. I'm okay with that, to be honest because it still looks good it's a great centerpiece at some point i want to actually completely change this um, i want to do a full-on plant setup for them but not at the moment at the moment it's fine there's plenty of other stuff going on but someday i want to do a huge huge sort of discus planted aquarium that's full-on you know substrate look at that male at the back there this one he is an absolute beast but you know this there is space for them it's not an issue at all i spoke to many discus breeders and, and experienced discus keepers that say there's plenty of plenty enough space in there so nothing to worry about with that i mean the thing is the tank has got a lot of depth you see so when you come to the side like this there's so much depth and they go in and out and everywhere you know discus aren't massive swimmers that go swimming everywhere all the time so they don't need a huge huge amount of space but what i have provided them with, with is lots of sort of different territories and that sort of st stops any sort of arguments we don't get any fighting at all so that is all good and next up we have got my neon tetra blackwater aquarium so from this angle look it's nice and dark and that's because <laughs> on the top there is tons and tons of these floating amazon frog bit we've got there we've got salvinia we've got red root floaters in there as well which look absolutely great this tank just seems to make them go awesome so red but at, down the bottom here you might have just seen i've got a big chunk of algae i left it there why not it's real that's what the tank looks like i'm not going to sort of over clean all of these tanks just for the video because that's not what they look like all the time it's not possible to get pristine tanks all the time when you've got as many as i've got but i like all this naturalness i like that for some reason the algae has just decided to grow in this corner is it because the flow is hitting there and then it, i don't know the flow has caused the algae i suppose the the light is on there as well so it's just pure sand and none of the gravel because it's been blown away who knows like same here so the darker you get the no, there's no algae so oh fun fact light causes algae <laughs> no that's not true it does help though sometimes you can have two tanks exactly the same one gets algae and one doesn't so it's a mystery mother nature at its finest but yeah it's just a simple scape it was just two massive bits of wood and then <laughs> that was it and some sand in the bottom and then a ton of neon tetras now the idea was to try and get them sort of breeding and i have seen spawning action in the mornings but like many have said it's not going to happen because the uh, the other the other fish in there will just pick off any babies before I see them. So there is tons of hiding space because I added that huge load of uh, what is it uh, Java moss? Yes, yeah, just Java moss, or it could be Taiwan moss, which is still Java moss. But yeah, so that that's what would happen. They'd probably hang around in there, and then the adult neon tetras would just pick them off. But yeah, cool little setup, something different, and I think that it looks really good right next to the discus aquarium as well. Next up, we've got a plant and some wood. Uh, I'm gonna be doing something with those at some point, but next to that, we've got my better fish, Mike. This is his little, little shindig. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> yeah, nice little simple home. Some awesome looking Belixa japonica here, look. That's growing really, really nice. Oh, it's actually purling since I just did a water change. This was absolutely covered at the surface with floating plants, but I've just taken a load of them out. It was just way too crowded and uh, Mike seems to be, well, to be honest, Mike is no different. He doesn't mind, he's indifferent either way. He doesn't care if there's float, floating plants or there's no floating plants. He's happy, happy, happy. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, better fish do actually like a more sort of darker setup. So it didn't bother him that there wasn't a lot of light coming in, but you know, I think it does look better this way. Uh, it's still not too bright. So yeah, ideal, nice little setup, nice and simple. Just a couple of rocks at the back, Java fern also at the back that's kind of taken over and Blixer Japonica in the foreground with a couple of little pebbles. And I also put some leaf litter in this tank as well, which was good. And lighting wise, it's got the uh, Twin Star 300. I don't know which mod, ah, oh, C. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and then there's just a really cheap hang on the back filter you can see there. That costs next to nothing and just does a really good job, to be honest. It, it, it does what I need it to do. And that's just gently trickle water in and out and keep everything clean. 
Okay, moving on a little bit quickly now. So this tank here was the one I set up recently for my new better fish, Phantom. Now, remember me saying to you guys, when I set it up, it was covered in this weird powdery stuff everywhere, this green powder algae. Well, it's back on this tank. I've taken the fish out because he's got his new setup that we'll see in a little bit. And I was hoping to keep this one and treat it and get it, get it looking awesome. But I'm just going to get rid of all of it, to be honest. I'm going to take out the rocks, scrub them off because this powdery stuff, I've never seen it before in any other tank of mine and I can't get rid of it I don't I don't know what it is I have not seen it on any other tank either it's a really weird one as soon as I get rid of it all it comes back within days and covers all the surface it's, it's very very strange next to that tank is the Ikebana aquarium that I made again overgrown I'm just leaving it it's just just again it's more of an ornamental piece just sits there looks nice and green in the corner it does need some of those floating plants taken out as well though because that's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> up the top this tank was completely packed full this is a dirted aquarium so it's just sand and dirt it's it was super super green and everything but i've, I've cut it right back uh, there's a brown tinge to the water because obviously the tannins in the wood and it's not actually had a water change in so long now inhabitants wise it's got a couple of cherry shrimp and my little pea puffer pea there he is look he's doing really good I'm going to change this up for him soon or, or no so the plan was you see that i just leave the tank to its own devices now and see if it recovers and goes back green again and you know what i'm pretty certain it will because it already looks better than when i hacked it back a few days ago now to the side of it is this cool little aquarium that i did there was just one piece of trident fern that i attached to a bit a bit of bogwood uh rested them on some pebbles and it has taken over the tank i want to use this as a centerpiece for a tank at some point but for now i'm just letting it grow out there's no livestock in this tank and sometimes i use it though as a cool little sort of temporary home for new fish just to watch them a quarantine tank essentially again it's still got that sort of little filter at the back the little trickle hang on the back one does the job really nicely And here we have got my goldfish tank. So this is, yeah, just a temporary setup, but doesn't it look clean? It's a, it's a nice look, isn't it? This is Ember. Ember is a Oranda goldfish. Look at the fantail on it. He is absolutely insane. It's a boy, by the way, guys. I know this because he gets these little star things, star polyps, I think they call them, on his uh, pectoral fins when he's ready to uh, mate. And if pumpkin here has actually ready to spawn, pumpkin's a female, female ranchu now many of you are probably going to ask if you're returning to the channel for a long time where are ghost and chocolate well sadly i lost both of those for reasons i don't really know but they're fancy goldfish so sometimes you just get problems but yeah you know these guys are doing absolutely fantastic which is great i did get a problem a while back with one of uh, ember's fins it got caught on something and it looked really sore and had a little ulcer coming out of it but managed to heal that absolutely fine and now he's doing great so we just got some amazon frog bit on the surface there that'll pull nitrates out of the water as it tries to grow and it'll you know pull all nutrients out so it stops like big amounts of algae growth you do get some still but nothing major which is all good by me and then there's just a canister filter down the bottom here that's just you know plumbed in and works really nicely no need for a heater the room's heated and you know goldfish don't like too warm temperatures anyway so over in the back corner we've got two different setups here so this is a paludarium from um, exoterra absolutely brilliant it is top notch it it does exactly what it needs to do but i'm going to be taking it out soon and the reason is that i like fish tanks and as great as this is for what it's meant for which is amphibians and potentially fish as well um, i'm just not that into that i tried to force it in, in my own mind thinking oh yeah get like amphibians and stuff like that maybe i will one day but at the moment i'm not that into it i'd be pushing something that i wasn't really passionate about and in this space i want there to be a nice new aquarium another four foot one i like the four foot ones i can do a lot with them and a lot of different styles and i've been liking doing the different theme stuff as well so the theme for this one will probably be an indian aquarium or something like that i've got a lot of indian subscribers and you know you get some really cool fish from india plants and all that and a really good look so i'd like to do something like that in the future but if you look down here so here's what we set up this is going to be like a place for guppies to go see I want to do that still but I want to do it in a different aquarium a proper aquarium it looks good I've not done a single water change on it uh, the filters fallen over pointing downwards but the water's still crystal clear the plants are super 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 healthy the top plants are also really healthy um, I don't do anything to it it just sits here and gets better and better <laughs> probably a testament to how good the sort of whole thing is to be fair including the lighting and and the humidity staying in and the right correct for the for the plants in fact i haven't even watered them for ages <laughs> And finally, on to Little Phantom's new aquarium. This is a brand new setup, guys. Links to the build video above. 
Uh, it's doing really, really well. There's not a spot of algae, so the lighting is, you know, I've nailed it. I've nailed the lighting. And what is the lighting? It's a little desk lamp. <laughs> so this plant here is a piece of lily and it's got the roots into the water and then it's growing at the top like this. It's doing fantastically well. Like all the leaves are super, super healthy. And even all the underwater plants, the submerged plants, they're all doing really well as well. We've got Anubius there. We've got um, Hydrocot Japan. We've got, I wanted to keep it simple underneath you see, so there isn't a ton of plants. So you, you've got the main part of your greenery is the top and then just, you know, open sort of swim space for the better fish on the bottom. But how good does he look? Oh, he's so cool. So he's like a, I think he's called a Nemo Koi betta. So it's like a special betta. He's not just your standard one that you get, um, but he, he's got a lot of character. Uh, probably the most character in a better fish I've had, even more than Mike. He's always here looking at me. And obviously I'm normally just sat here on my desk working away and you know, blah, 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 working away. Look to the side. There he is swimming backwards and forwards, normally begging for food. Clever little things, these better fish. They know where you are at all times. They know how to look cute because they want to get fed. But yeah, really nice little tabletop aquarium. And very simple as well. There's nothing complicated about this. Filtration wise, look, we've just got a little outlet there and an inlet that goes down to this tiny little canister filter. And I think I've left the link for that in the description as well if you want to get it from Amazon or whatever. Yeah, really cheap setup that, the whole thing. And I think really effective and looks cool. So that is all the working aquariums in Studio One. Let's go into Studio Number Two. And here we are guys, where to start, where to start? Well, up here we've got like loads of racking and loads of nano tanks they are. They're cubes, 30 centimeter or one foot cubes. And I've got, what's that, six, 12 of them. Now I'm actually planning soon on putting one there, one there, so rows of four and then an extra row. So I've got to free up that section for even more tanks. I want bigger tanks this side and then all the nanos this side, just full of shrimp. So at the top here, we've just got at the moment some lampi killi fish. They're just in a storage tank effectively because I'm going to be doing a really cool skate for them in another setup. But I like to keep stuff here first now, so I've got it on hand ready for my builds. So every sort of weekend I do a build video, a full tutorial from start to finish, setting up the tank and adding the fish as well. This tank has got nothing in but plants. This tank though has got my... Uh, tiger shrimp they are so cool looking obviously i'll get nice close-ups of them and it's got killifish in there as well it's clown killifish they're so good looking but they are very very small but also very very cute so that's all good oh right at the back there we can see that there's a actually a molt which means that the uh the shrimp are growing which is great that's what we want they've been in here now for about a month so soon we should start to see some babies coming now down the bottom again more plants more plants and then in this one more plants and some corys that could be gonna they're gonna be going in the discus tank soon so these are um oh sorry i don't want to i don't want to upset them these are stir by corydoras look at those awesome oranges on them there's six of them in here they're doing very well they're eating they're swimming about the colors are looking good so they are really really nice like i say this isn't a permanent setup this is just temporary just while we have a look at them obviously the discus in the other aquarium are very very expensive and we don't want to be putting new fish in today until we're absolutely certain there's no parasites or anything on them well as certain as we can be anyway So now over on this side of the racking, we've got quite a lot more shrimp tanks and killifish tanks. So up on this one, this is the Australia killifish, Australia, not Australia, because there are no killifish in Australia, which is one of the few continents that doesn't actually have killifish, which is quite interesting. Uh, again, explosion of pearl weed, just like a lot of my tanks here. I mean, it really works at purifying the water and it's green, so what's not to like? So yeah, that is the male there, the really beautiful, colorful one and the female is usually tucked in behind somewhere. Female, where are you? Well, she's in there somewhere. I've got some old footage I'll pull up of her, but she's, she's bright yellow, gorgeous looking female to be fair. <laughs> and then next to them, I've got the crystal red shrimp, which are now doing fantastic after a pretty rough start. So I rescaped the tank recently. And when I put the shrimp back in, I didn't add beneficial bacteria to the tank, forgetting because I put I put a cycled um, sponge in. Well, with shrimp, that isn't quite enough with such a small setup and obviously such a small sponge. So I actually needed to put in beneficial bacteria as well. As soon as I started doing that, 
all the levels in the tank went just back to normal straight away i had no more death so there's a lesson there if you do a big change up on your shrimp tanks it, um, you need to add beneficial bacteria i've been adding it every single day for a week just to make sure you know lots of people were saying to me that you, you changed it too early and you disrupted it you can't do that to them well maybe they're right maybe they're not but all i know is as soon as i added the beneficial bacteria back in Everything was perfect. I've not had a single death since, so that's great. What is really nice as well is this tank is really growing this, this uh, hair grass really well. Look at all these runners already in the foreground. It's only been set up for like a few weeks. Uh, that's looking great though, but it's thickened right out, hasn't it? I mean, I did plant heavy to start with, so that has helped, but overall really happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving the algae on the sides of the tank and just cleaning the front glass so we can see nicely, but also there's just more for the, uh, for the shrimp to peck at. I also feed this tank every other day with like one stick and adding back to AE twice a week at the moment, the tiniest little nugget of it, like a really, really small amount. You don't want too much of that stuff because it can potentially kill your shrimp to be honest and then moving on next to them <laughs> another explosion of pearl weed i'm going to go through these quite quickly because like i say they're not scaped this one is going to be scaped soon probably this weekend uh, this is the blue dream tank so there's blue dream caradina shrimp so these are neo caradina shrimp and these are caradina no the other way around this is neo caradina shrimp these are caradina caradina shrimp are a lot harder to care for the neos are the ones that are like less sensitive so you still got to be careful with them but you can get away with a little bit more than you can with the caradinas apparently at the moment all i'm looking at is a snail <laughs> where are they i tell you what i'm gonna get some i'm gonna come away i'm gonna get some food out put it all into the, the shrimp tank so we can get them all crowded around it and then come back Right, all the food's in and the shrimp are going nuts for it. There's the uh, crystals. I think we've got five or six in there. But there was more than that. They were all crowded around. A couple grabbed a bit and then just cleared off again. <laughs> and then over here, look, we've got the blue dreams. Uh, there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot have come out to play. See, look at them all in there. Tons and tons of them. I don't think any of them are buried yet. I've been checking regularly. I'm not seeing any signs. Although quite a few of are saddled. Saddled means that they got like the undeveloped eggs in their back, and then they eventually sort of come down um, into their abdomen. I don't really know the anatomy of the shrimp to be honest, and what the areas are called. Basically think of ovaries that show and then the eggs come down underneath afterwards when they're sort of fertile i i guess that's the best way to explain it and then down the bottom here look look at the cherries they are gone nuts this is the one i should have done a time lapse on but i took a took a lucky guess and it wasn't very active but still not to worry these guys look are so so nice the reddest of red and only so you can see there look on one of those right next to the snail there that's a saddled one because it's got that like sort of gold top back section. That's good. That means that hopefully we'll get some uh, some berries, buried shrimp. Buried means eggs. They got they're carrying eggs. Hopefully we get some eggs on these guys soon. Nice little setup for them actually. They seem to seem to really like it. And they're they're one of the one of the shrimp that actually come right to the front into the dish. Quite whoop, he fell off. <laughs> um, when you feed them as well, so they're quite cool to watch and come back in on. I'd like to feed and walk away and then come back and see what's going on. Yeah, so then over to the tigers, quite a few of them in the foreground now. They go in, grab some, and then they clear off again. But yeah, they're really cool as well. But what I'm going to do, see, is now that I've fed them, I'll come back in a few hours and just suck out whatever hasn't been eaten because I don't want to risk getting any sort of nitrate spikes or anything like that in these again because shrimp are sensitive and you can kill them off quite easily. Right, so up next here, we've got like a triple arrangement of 60 centimeter or two foot aquariums. I went with like different looks in all of them because you know, why do you want to keep stuff the same all the time? This one here was sort of like a South American Brazilian biotope sort of style aquarium. Style I say, because you know, the plants aren't from that area. Not all of them anyway, like Limnophila is more like Asian, I think. Anyway, I just the look I was going for, but it's a cool look, I think. So we've got Ember Tetras at the back there in their nice little group. They think I'm about to feed them. That's exactly where they wait because I put the feed, the food, sorry, into the flow there and it goes round, they catch it all. But yeah, this tank is fantastic. I love it. This is one that I actually do keep on top of the trimming of. As you can see, I've got that nice little sort of slope going in the background with the stem plants. There is a little bit of algae. So if you come up close here, we can see hair algae is all on this uh, Java moss and that one at the back there. 
and that one there. But you know what? I'm not bothered. It doesn't hurt, does it? It's not hurting the whole, whole impression of the scape. It's staying in the moss and it's natural. It doesn't hurt. Just let it go if you've got something like that. I could get in there with some hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide and spray it off and watch it sizzle, but why? What's the point? It's fine. It's all balanced. The fish are doing great. It's not upset anything. And this plant down here, which I cannot remember the name of, is actually starting to carpet out into the gravel, which is cool because there's no nutrients in that gravel, but you know, it's obviously pulling it from somewhere. Let me come to the side and you can see. So there's the layering for this tank. So I had a gravel all over the top and then like aquasaur and gravel underneath and it's all sort of capped. And luckily for me, it's all stayed as, the, as, as it was, you know, nothing's migrated into the foreground. The dark stuff you can see is just dark pebbles I got because I wanted them to match the bigger pebbles. There was quite a lot of these pebbles, but you can't see them anymore because it's grown in so well. And I really love these lily pipes as well. So I've got one coming this way, one going that way. That one at the back there siphons off the top so we get clear and no sort of biofilm at any point so it's always really nice and perfectly clear. I just said clear, clear again, clear. <laughs> yeah, nice and impactful as well. Boom, just like two prongs just coming out. I don't know, I just went with it and I really like it. It's just a simple one, really simple to be fair. So you just got a border of rocks going round, wood in the middle and then tons of stem plants and some moss. But it's all in the detail, see? So all these little bits of stone and stuff all just bring that realism to life. And even in the gravel there, let's see. Yeah, I just like it, it's really cool. And then next to that, we've got sort of like a mini aqua terrarium, if you like. I was trying to go for like a Chinese stream with just like a little bit of a, a spring coming out of that rock there and a nice plant growing all out the top. This is some kind of bamboo thingy. But I don't know. Anyway, growing really well. Um, it has, well, to be fair, it's not growing really well. It's staying exactly as it is. It's not growing, it's not dying back. The color's staying in the leaves. Um, it, it's all doing really good and in the bottom we've got white cloud mountain minnows again they are doing fantastic as well so overall success all around um, I wanted to see some breeding action I'm not even sure if I've got any females to be honest so if we haven't got any breeding action it's probably because of that but we've seen breeding behavior but that could be just males fighting males for dominance and that kind of thing but the tank itself Nice little opening and clear section in the foreground and then the plants tend to stay at the back there and there and I guess that's just because of the way the water flows outwards either way. But they're really cool fish, they're really underrated the white cloud mountain minnows. This is the sort of golden variety which I like the most to be honest. Loads of action going on, they're putting on a good show for us actually. So the way I've made this skate is just a pile of rocks on the bottom and with a gap at the back. Now the gap at the back on this side has got a load of gravel and the back at this side which you're probably not gonna be able to see but down below there it's just a little internal filter with a hose attachment to the outlet that goes up here and hides under this rock and just sprays out so it pulls water in round that way tri trickles out the top and then you've got extra media if you like for beneficial bacteria all in that gravel section all the way underneath so that's why it's super healthy there's zero algae on this setup as well and that's probably down to the fact the light is so high above and we're not getting high light hitting all the time that's why the gravel's so nice and clean as well to be fair and last but not least out of these three this is the sparkling grammy tank i've made now this is a little darker this one so it's like i wanted to go for a Blackwater style skate, but without loads and loads of tannins. So there's a bit of tannins, but not too much. But the sparkling grammys are great. Just the right amount of light coming through to really show off their sparkles, hence sparkling grammy. We've got six in there, but they're, oh, look at him. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see him. I'll get some B-roll as usual, overlay that here. But yeah, just a simple design. One sort of stump, if you like, rocks all around it, leaf litter, and just, shoots of different things coming through different plants and then a load of taller stems and bigger leaf stems in the background i've not trimmed this once and i've only done water, two water changes since i set it up which was about a month and a half ago so you know it's it's going really well i don't have to do anything to it but i want to change it soon because to be honest i'm not drawn to it i like it but i'm not drawn to it when i come in the room so if i come back here because it's quite sort of dark over there, I'm drawn to this one, always have a peek in the middle one, and I kind of just have a little look to make sure the fish are all right, but I'm not pulled to it. I wanna change it to be something that I'm like pulled to and drawn to. You should always do that with your fish tanks. If you're not feeling them, change them. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know if you're into something or not, and if you're not, then why are you hanging on to it? We can do something a lot better. I like it, the plants are really healthy, so I can reuse the plants, but I can do a much better setup than that. So that'll be coming soon as well.
So up next, I have got my better sorority tank. So these are all female better fish. I've got five in here, although I can't see five at the moment. There's two of them. No arguments, look, all happy. Loads of space, you see. Where's the others? They're hiding. I'm sure they'll come forward. There's one of them as well. Oh yeah, there's one. There's three. Oh, there's the fourth. So yeah, like I said to some of you guys, we're concerned with like stress stripes or something. Well, some, some people in the know have told me they're not always stress stripes. Sometimes they're dominant stripes. Now this makes sense because you only really see them on certain fish when I come to the front. <laughs> like this one look, is striped right up, but then this one, completely fine. So, you know, it just depends on the fish, the personality of the fish, that sort of thing. But what I can say is the whole tank is doing great. I've just done a massive trim up on it, which will feature in a vlog soon, because there was a lot of work that needed doing, and I had to take out a load of the uh, floating plants, because up the top there was a load of Amazon frog bit, and it was just completely taking over the whole surface, surface of the water. So I've just swapped it out now for this red root floaters which as many of you know is my absolute favorite they're so so nice looking and they just got those gorgeous red roots everywhere oh hello <laughs> hey buddy all right i think they're being fed now as is often the case when you go close to a better fish tank but yeah there's no algae in this we started off to a bit of a rough start tons of diatoms and tons of algae but it soon went away when we got our specialist fish like you know auto sinkless catfish and our big pleco or ancestress where has he gone he was here two seconds ago <laughs> but the moss look the moss is looking fantastic that had a load of diatom algae in it but obviously the cleanup crew have done well and the tank settling in just just naturally has allowed that to happen as well and you can see that here the rotala hr is starting to get red you know as it gets closer and closer to the surface it will get more and more red so that's what we're seeing as it gets closer to the light sorry not necessarily the surface but obviously closer to the surface of the water is higher light intensity and that is what causes red plants to be at their reddest and over there look in the background Ludwigia palustrius red there it is that I'll come right down to the side that's now doing really good that's actually had a trim up and replant so I'll get double the stem soon oh there's a leaf that's come off there I'll get that in a minute yeah so so nice I'm really happy as well that the java ferns that I've attached at the back of that log have just sprouted new ones you can see right there look that's all new growth so it looks so crisp and green really loving this tank and how how well it's coming on it's a bit of a sort of grow out tank for me for different stems that I hadn't really used before and the crypts all melted back if you remember me showing you but look at them now that's all new growth apart from the darkest of leaves you can see there that is all new growth and we've got the same situation around here as well look brand new now these crypts are also new because they all melted away oh it was horrible but i knew they'd grow back if you just be patient they will grow back and up until a few days ago this whole section was covered in you guessed it pearl weed but i've done the right thing trimmed it right back and i'm gonna keep it all low in that foreground and just give it that staggered look all the background stems as well are all the way to the top but again we don't want that i want to keep it really controlled it's turning out beautiful and uh, really pleased with the progress of it so far and then over to this monstrosity here this is going to be my amazon tank many of you have been following the series if you haven't have a look through my video list we've got two two parts to it now building of the whole tank so i built the frame we've got a nice custom background custom lights custom sounds good it's a good word <laughs> <laughs> makes you sound specialist or something well i mean it's diy really but yeah we've got awesome big bits of wood coming in not to everyone's taste but give it time trust me when i've got the planting done it should look pretty spectacular that's coming next the planting will be in the next vlog and i've got some really cool plans for this tank but so far it's just basically the wood is in we've got some really really nice gravel down here which is just pool filter sand but then there's loads of detailed gravel that's on top of it so yeah many people ask in the comments where'd you get that wood from it's from aquarium gardens and so is also the detailed gravel as well I got the pool filter sand online, but to get all the detail stuff that actually suits it all, you need to you need to get some specialist stuff. Really, you can try and find it if you want, but it's quite difficult out in the you know out in the woods or whatever to try and find the correct tones of, of gravel. You'd be picking stuff out forever, and this is that Yangst Yungst. <laughs> I can't, I can't say it, rock, from a place in China, but it looks awesome. It, it suits the sort of smoothness that I was going for because it's going to be fast flowing in here. I've got a nice big power head coming in. I want loads of flow, loads of little schools of different tetras and fish, just a complete sort of really cool Amazon community vibe going on. And I think I can pull that off really well. Loads of interest, loads of action, you know, fast flow. Oh, plants, get, yes, it's going to be absolutely awesome.
And then right next to that tank, we've got this one. This is just a holding tank for plants. Quite a lot of these plants are gonna be going across into this aquarium, so that's why I've just sort of left at the moment. But this is gonna be a Dutch style goldfish aquarium. Now, normally those words don't go together, Dutch style and goldfish, because a lot of people think goldfish eat plants, and they do, but it's only certain plants that they eat. They tend to stay away from quite a few of the stem plants I've noticed. So what I've done previously is just put some stems in with them and just see what they did. And quite a lot of the ones I've got here, they won't actually eat. But you know, it's all going to be experiment. I'm sure I'll come in after day one of putting the fish in and find a load of eaten plants. But that's part and parcel of it. That's part of the learning process. And that's going to be the fun of it. Seeing what we can put in with the goldfish, what does work, what doesn't, what they eat, what they just destroy. It might be an absolute disaster, but you've got to try these things. Otherwise, you know, how do you learn if you don't try new things? If you don't fail at certain things, you don't move forward, do you? So that is the vlog over. We don't need to make this video longer than it needs to be. So if you haven't already, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.